Welcome to the Ringer NFL Draft Show. My name is Danny Heifetz, and I am joined by Danny Kelly and Craig Horlbeck. No Ben Solak today. Ben Solak has been in a coma since the Stefan Diggs trade went down. We were mm. looking for signs. He couldn't tonight. handle it. No. <laughs> he just froze. Yeah. So, you know, we're just going to try to resuscitate Solak. But until then, we're going to do a mailbag today. Thank you to everyone who emailed us at ringerfantasyfootball at gmail.com. Uh, but first, our mailbag, a little interruptado, because we have a Stefan Diggs. I just made that up. No, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I like it. it Slightly works. offensive, probably, in some probably. ways. Mildly, I'm, I'm not yeah. sure. Mildly offensive. Yeah. Like Mildly. Anyway, Stephon Diggs got traded. Let's just get into it. So the Bills traded Stephon Diggs to the Houston Texans. Uh, the Bills get a future second rounder. So 2025 second round pick. That's actually Minnesota's. And in exchange, the Houston Texans get Stephon Diggs mm. plus a sixth rounder this year and a fifth rounder next year. And then because the Bills traded Diggs, they also, Bills have to take $31 million in dead cap this year. And a reminder, dead cap is like money they already paid Stephon Diggs that they have to account for now. So it's like a credit card. You spend the money now, you're going to pay it later, but then you want to close the card. Well, you got to, you owe them all that money that you spent. So that's basically it. So the Bills have $31 million of Buffalo's budget this year will be so that he can, Stephon Diggs can play for the Houston Texans. Right. Uh, meanwhile, the Texans get Diggs for $19 million this year and then they owe him no guaranteed money whatsoever after the season so well what is your immediate reaction to this dk yeah uh my first immediate reaction quite honestly was that feels kind of steep like a second round pick for steep. stefan Diggs is he's 31 years old just really? relative especially relative to all the trades we've seen lately like amari cooper got traded for a fifth rounder like all the, uh, there's been so many trades. Keenan Allen for a fourth. Yeah, there's been for a sixth. A hundred percent. So there's been so many trades of late where it's like, oh, that's what they got. Why did my team not do that? This one felt more like, ooh, that w that was a steep price to pay for a thirty, like soon to be thirty one year old guy who completely fell off the soon map. Soon to be thirty one, also known as thirty. <laughs> Soon to be 30. Got, He's 30 going I, I love on 31. Thank you, Craig. However, like I could just be like a, a just recently 29 year old wide receiver. What what is his birthday? Because the re, I think it's the November reason you, 29th. Okay, We're doing so the metric up. system for age. He's 20 and 10. <laughs> Craig, He's here's 30. the reason you do that. It's his age 31 season. It's gonna be his age 31 season. He'll be 31 well, in all right, Mr. That 41 season. years old. Calm down. In like I'm week 10, in like week 12, he'll be he'll It's be your 30. age 42 yeah, you podcast know what? year. Do you, want a, do you want a 31-year-old guy who's like getting all old in the playoffs? Like that's not you know what, what we want. People forget when the Patriots traded for Andy Moss, guess how old he was that season? He was 30 and he had 23 touchdowns. I think this is mm. a really easy, great move for it. I think the, but the, the, but we're missing the, is, the question is, is Stephon Steep. Diggs good? Steep. Like, is Stephon Diggs good? And here's the thing. On one hand, it's Stephon Diggs. We could sit here and be like, you know, do the Texans have a top three receiver core? Nico Collins, Stephon Diggs tanked out. The question is, is Stephon Diggs good? Because on one hand, he's Stephon Diggs. On the other hand, the final three months of the season for the Bills, Khalil Shakir had more receiving yards for the Bills than Stephon Diggs did. And so I think the question to me is super simple, which is, is was Stephon Diggs hurt and kind of sucking it up? Or does Stephon Diggs actually like super decline last year and the Bills are making out like bandits? I, I, I think I, there's a third door too, Heifetz, that I've, I've seen people talking about on Twitter that I think is actually very intriguing is... If you look at the splits between uh, after Joe Brady took over versus before it was uh, Ken Dorsey. Brady, offensive coordinator. Yes, Ken Dorsey. And so basically the splits between Ken Dorsey as offensive coordinator and Joe Brady as offensive corner coordinator, the idea and thought here, the theory is that Joe Brady's offense does not really have a focal point guy. Like they're not drawing up plays for Stefan Diggs. And as a result of that, he didn't get nearly as much uh, of a target rate. He didn't get nearly as much production. And by the way, he got mad and he decided he wanted to start like trash talking. Josh well, he's Allen always mad. On Twitter. mad. Yeah. So um, I think that's door number three. That is, I think potentially valid here. Maybe Stefan Diggs is actually still really, really good. Um, but this is also alluding to what I just said was, you know, he was going like just yesterday. He went on Twitter and was like questioning whether Josh Allen will be good without him. Well, he probably, uh, this is well, the type I mean, of guy there's there, the bills are spending $31 million of dead cap to get rid of this guy. Like that has to, to put off some alarm bells for you. They know him. Be, They've had been around him for years. To the be Vikings, fair, by I, the way, also got rid of him. I will say well, in that I, argument, other people who took massive dead caps to get rid of a player recently are Aaron Rodgers, Russell Wilson, Carson Wentz, Antonio Brown. Those are very recent, huge dead cap. I'll give you that. <laughs> Everywhere. So, I mean, so, that, yeah. 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 But Stefan Diggs went to the bills and was fantastic for great, four straight seasons. Great point. Great point. And they yeah. nearly, made the Super Bowl and we're basically, if Patrick Mahomes didn't exist, Josh Allen would probably have like two Super Bowl rings right now. Uh, I do think, DK, going back to what you said, I, I think it's crazy that 
we are assuming that Stefan Diggs might be just like immediately over the hump. To start last year, the first six weeks of the season, he was the number one wide receiver in fantasy. He mm -hmm. was on fire. It was classic Stefan Diggs. <laughs> then the Ken Dorsey firing happens, and Scott Barrett from Fantasy Points tweeted this. Uh, Pre-Joe Brady, Stefan Diggs, 86 yards a game. During Joe Brady, 45 yards a game. Which, yeah. I, I, to, and that's kind of why I'm, I'm honestly... He also really pointed out that DJ Moore in Carolina, when Joe Brady was in Carolina, DJ Moore uh, finished as the the third best wide receiver on that team behind Robbie Anderson and Curtis Samuel. That's yeah. See, that's, that's good. Joe Brady might not be a good coordinator, and that's why I'm thrown off guard, DK. That I'm surprised that you didn't think this was like a, a hit for the Texans because the reality no. is the Texans had the 23rd pick, and then they flipped that to two second rounders with the Vikings. But now, and then with if you take that trade plus this trade. The Texans turned the 23rd pick in the draft into the 42nd pick in the draft and Stefan Diggs. That's amazing. The Texans are doing everything we always say. Rookie quarterback contracts. Yeah. CJ Stroud's cheap. You get to use the money around it. And they're like, all right, we have like three years now where CJ Stroud's going to be hopefully elite, healthy, and like great. And now it's like, all right, get him Stefan Diggs. Get him Nico Collins. They spent money on I, defense. Yeah, I mean, I get and that. And not again, only like, that, it's a one-year deal. It's basically a team option after this year for Diggs. But, they're going to pay Diggs $18 million this year, and then it's up to the Texans. Again, that I, point, I, though, to be clear, I don't think that Stefan Diggs, if if he can return to what he was early in the season last year, like obviously that's a great thing for uh, for CJ Stroud. And this is exactly what we preach all the time. Like get good guys around your young quarterbacks while they can. This is awesome. Great point of view. My, I, you just asked me for my initial impression and my initial impression was like, wow, a second rounder is steep, especially okay. when you talk about Keenan Allen for a fourth. Well, it, or no, who, like I, there's I, been so many trades again that have just happened where it's like, you spent, that's all it took, a six-rounder? Why no, is not answer, every though, team doing this? The answer, though, is not to well, actually, you, Craig, but the answer is that actually Craig's wrong. It's not a one-year deal. It's They have no guaranteed money left, but they actually have, like, Keenan Allen, this is the last year of Keenan Allen's contract, so they're paying a fourth-rounder because it's, like, after this year, he's 32, but then he's not under team control. Diggs has, like, three years left of team control. He has four years left in his contract, even if you But aren't they all the team year. options? They don't have to pick them up. Yeah, but that's good. That's a That means the team gets to decide. That means if he sucks, they're not committed. But if he's good, he's under contract. That's what teams want. Teams want long-term commitments with no guaranteed money. That's exactly yeah, what teams I'm, want. I'm saying the same thing, that, like, worst-case scenario, this is a one-year thing, and they don't have to pay for him for the next three years. Exactly. But best case scenario, Stephon Diggs leads the yeah. NFL in receiving, but he's under contract for three more seasons after that. The Keenan Allen for fourth, because it's the best case. What if Keenan Allen's incredible Chicago? He's a free agent. Same yeah. deal with Justin Fields. Uh, what? After next year. So what? Justin Fields next year goes from getting paid one and a half million dollars <laughs> to twenty five million dollars. Then he's a free agent and they're going to decline it. So real realistically, Justin Fields is a free agent next season. So that's why he went for a six round pick. The team control is why it's such a, a low, like a mm. higher pick for Diggs. But I think I, I think it's easy to see why this is good for the Texans, the AFC South, all that jazz. I want the Bills. I think this is crazy for the Bills. Um, if you're a Bills fan, I think this is kind of gutting. Mm. And especially because, uh, frankly, this era of Josh Allen and the Bills, as we know it, is over. And Patrick Mahomes killed it. Like, as you said, Craig, like the reality is this is happening. The Bills totally did a facelift <laughs> because the last four years, the Bills <laughs> went for it. Like they maxed, they maxed out all the credit cards to go for it the last four years. Patrick Mahomes ended three of the last four Bills seasons in the fucking playoffs. Patrick Mahomes, like, kind of personally ended this era of the Bills. And they spent all this money that they're like, all right, they maxed out the credit cards. And then you got to pay the bill. And you're like, all right. Do I really need Peacock Premium Plus for eleven ninety nine a month? Like, all right, the, you know it adds up. And they look, M Micah Hyde, Jordan Poirier, they're two great safeties. Tre'Davious White, they're great cornerback. They're like adding up all these subscriptions, and they're like, do I really need this subscription to like I don't know? A again, Peacock Plus, Paramount, and then you look at stuff on things look, like thirty one million not dollars. That bad. Peacock's what? not that bad. There are there are worse streaming services out there. Than you can get it for free. Just, that's the thing. Do you want stuff on things? Thirty one million dollars. Do you want to just go get Brian Thomas LSU in the draft? And so that's the thing. The Bills unfortunately are setting up the next four years. And this is the very painful transition process between their last title run. But this is like the third era. The first era of Josh Allen was like, LOL, what a bad pick. Then the last four years that Mahomes ended. And now they like have to do a whole new one around Josh's prime. He's 27 years old. I just don't. Well, you see, if you want to talk age, Josh Allen is really 28. He turns 28 in May. That's, oh, that's said, the soon where you can be 28 year olds. Yeah, yeah. Yes. The formerly so 26 year old Josh Allen. See, I don't like taking a couple years off when your quarterback, who is a known maniac on the field, uh, is is nearing 30 years old. He's still in his prime. I mean, this, like the the physical side of Josh Allen is not going to get any better. I don't. He's not going to be like 33 years old doing the same Tasmanian devil stuff he's doing right now. 
So this kind of scares me. I think we're in so, a weird spot. Like if you're a Bills fan, you, you are less excited for this upcoming season and the season that follows than you were a week ago. I mean, your Super Bowl odds are certainly dropping. Even if you can dynasty brain this and be like, well, long-term, we're getting off the Stefan Diggs thing, bad locker room guy, we're, you know, the long-term contract we're off of. You can do all that, but in reality, the Bills are not a top three AFC team anymore. Well, he also wasn't happy there, which is probably not sure. great to be paying you know, a 30 million, like 18, $20 million to someone who fucking hates showing up to work every day. But then also it's again, I don't want to make it seem like they're just choosing to pull back. It's, it's like the first, the last four years were like a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday night bender that were like, Oh, great night. Great time. Great time. And then they're spending and they wake up Monday morning. They're like, Oh, we don't have much. We like spent money and they have to do a little reset. Now, I also, think by the way, the like Chiefs did that and then traded Tyreek Hill and won two Super Bowls. Yeah, I was going to say, it's like the Bills offense was still really good when Stefan Diggs was an afterthought in, in the scheme. Yes. Like, it's not like this offense is going to be total crap. And by the way, there's still plenty of time to make additional moves. Maybe they spend a first round pick on a receiver and it looks a little bit better. You know, maybe they go and trade for a guy like, hey, Tyler Lockett or whoever, some some other um, veteran guy who's kind of like nearing the end of his deal and another team wants to move on. Maybe they do this as like a little bridge type receiver uh, situation in, in Buffalo. I think there's still a lot of dominoes that are going to fall before the season starts before we really can say they're tanking it or, you know what I mean? They're just like, I don't think resetting. They're, right. They're, they're not, they're certainly not tanking, but it's what, what it's, it's the different, it, like this happens in football, but the, what is the defining era of the game of the bills? Uh, Josh Allen th- so far, it's still the 13 seconds game, right? What's crazy. They have no receivers left from that game. They have no, they have four defenders left from that game. Like it's a totally different Wild. team. And that, right, and it's like that's that's because they want to forget that night. They don't want to think about it. <laughs> yeah, Sean McD- Did you see someone had a meme? I don't know. Maybe we cut this, but did you see someone had a Sean McDermott talking to Stefan Diggs and they, they captioned it? There's no I in Al Qaeda. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's no I in Al Qaeda. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that's great. Twitter, but incredibly uh, good, incredibly good. That bit. was yeah. amazing. So, but to your point though about what do they do now? So I think we got an ama- amazing email from. I'm not going to lie. I don't know how to pronounce their name. I'm not the pronunciation guy. Hmm. J-E-S? I don't know if that's French Jess? Sure. I don't know. Sure. Jess? Do, do I want to attempt it? J? I don't know. See, Jess? if I did that, what if I did that? I would be Anyway, great question from Jay, which was, uh, what team with an absolute glaring hole in the roster would you be most worried about if they did not address that position in the first round or two? Timely. I, yeah. Hmm, incredible. T- yeah, incredibly timed the question. The Bills have the 20th pick. Again, the second rounder they got next year. So they have the 20th pick, mm. the 60th pick, and the 128th pick. They, they I mean, the Bills kind of have to hit a receiver in the first two rounds. And I think the question is, do they go with a guy like Brian Thomas at LSU? Or like, if he doesn't fall to them, I don't know. What do you think, DK? Like, do the Bills trade back, try to add extra picks? I feel like they need two receivers out of this draft because they also lost Gabe Davis. Or sorry, Gabe, they call him Gabe Davis? Yeah, yeah. They lost Gabe, Gabe Davis. Gabe Davis. Gabe yeah, Davis. Gabe Davis. Went to Jacksonville. And they signed Curtis Samuel, but Curtis Samuel is more of a replacement for like Cole Beasley. Like they mm-hmm. still need Gabe two outside receivers. Yeah, it's tough because it depends on how bullish you are on a guy like Dalton Kincaid. Obviously, as a rookie, he looked pretty promising and, and was very productive for them. If he is their de facto number one receiver, sort of like a Travis Kelsey type player, I don't think they necessarily need two receivers. I think they could probably do one and be pretty good, assuming like everything you know, you don't have a bunch of injuries or whatever. So I would say they need at least one and it would be shocking to me now, especially if they didn't use either of their two first picks on a receiver at this point. Um, So I feel that way about a few teams. Yeah. Uh, Like, I think it's kind of odd that four of the best, I don't know, 10 quarterbacks in the league have a terrible receiving core right now. The Chargers with Herbert, there's nothing for them. They have a fifth pick in the draft. The Jags with Trevor Lawrence, I mean... I guess you have Christian Kirk, you have Gabe Davis. Okay. They have four guys who are B minuses or C pluses, and they're fine with it. And Jack, they have the tight Patrick end. Mah- what's Patrick his name? Mahomes, obviously, and where she Rice is in a weird situation right now. We don't know what's going to end up with that. And then mm. now Josh Allen and the Bills. Like these are teams all with first round picks that all have massive glaring holes at the wide receiver position, with with legitimately Hall of Fame quarterbacks. Maybe so not DK, Trevor Lawrence. Well, that just tells you about the salary cap, right? A little yeah. bit. What well, I mean, there is a question there about whether I think that. At the end of the day, I don't have to go nerdy, but I think it's too, the other thing about the trade comp DK is it's like supply and demand. It's like every year we have all these receivers entering. There's all these receivers in the draft. So do you want to pay a 22 year old a million dollars a year? He's going to get better. Do you want to pay a 30, sorry, 30 going almost 31 year old? Yep. Uh, make 15, 20 million a year and they're going to get worse. 
because then there's the supply. Of, there's more and more receivers every year. And I think teams are like, oh, should we just be putting a quarterback? And it's the Leonardo DiCaprio. He's like, look, why would I get married? Yeah. It's another 25 year old I could date. That's easy. <laughs> so that's fun. Bill's pick 20th in the draft. Let's say Marvin Harrison Jr. at Ohio State. Uh, Malik Davis at LSU. Like Hyvitz blew right past that. That He's wasn't 20th. for him. That no, was good. I don't know if it was. An, I don't know if you thought it was inappropriate or something. Kind of just plowed right through it. DiCaprio. No, Heifetz yeah. loves the DiCaprio analogy. No, it's true. Just DiCaprio. Yeah. I just yeah. Well, okay. that's fine. I'm gonna keep going. Okay. Right. I think now if you say anything about it, it's gonna be awkward. I no, thought I was gonna ruffle weird. his feathers yeah. a little more. I thought he was gonna yeah. kind of. I thought his eyes were gonna perk up, but I, I got nothing from him. He's too locked in. You know, it's my fault because I pulled up the draft guide and I was trying to look at DK's beautiful draft guide at NFLDraft.com, and I was blinded by the beauty. Because it's even more beautiful than 28 year old models. You know, it, tw- Leo is on there right now. Le- sorry, Leo single. Sorry, and, and you're right. 20 Leo DiCaprio has never models. messed with anyone who's yeah. almost 29. DK, you're right. My fault. Um, My correct yeah, correction. Yes. 22. So let's say Marvin Harrison Jr. is gone. Malik Neighbors at LSU is gone. Brock Bowers, tight end at Georgia is gone. Roma Dunes at Washington is gone. If you're the if you're the Bills, would you be looking at like if Brian Thomas at a LSU mm-hmm. fell to you at 28? That's probably the dream. Yeah. At that point, would you? Take a player like Lad McConkey to Georgia. You have Troy Franklin on your big board out of Oregon. Would you take those dudes at 28? Or would you maybe trade back, try to add in their pick? And then because there's so many, mm. if Brian Thomas doesn't fall to you, like what would you do if you were the Bills GM and they called you up and they're like, hey, DK, we just made a huge mistake. What do we do, man? <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't know. It, it, it obviously just depends. Like if all three of those guys are still there, yes, trade back a couple because it's likely that you'll still be able to draft one of them. Um, but there's so many variables here. How, how much do they like all these guys? How much do they think he's going to fit in their offense? I think Brian Thomas would be sort of the ideal pick for them just because of his ability to take the top off the of defense. He's run after the catch guy. He's a big outside guy with a ton of upside. He has size, too. I mean, everybody on the Bills right now, Khalil yeah. Sha- Shakir, uh, Curtis Samuel, these are all kind of like short, you know, yeah. quick, intermediate kind of guys. Exactly. I think a, a guy like Brian Thomas or maybe even Keon Coleman or A.D. Mitchell those guys, those three make the most sense, uh, like an archetype point of view, where they're going to give you that big outside presence. All three of them are pretty good in terms of like going up and catching it in in contested catch situations, like basically using their their size as an advantage. I think with Josh Allen particularly, combining hit, like that big arm and that aggressive style with one of these guys makes a lot of sense. So. I mean, do you think there's any yeah. way that that the Bills start the season with the current receiving crop they have right now? I think Khalil the Shakir odds are it's low. Yeah, Curtis Samuel, and Khalil Shakir, Dalton Kincaid. So I think DK is right that they probably need one guy, not necessarily one day one guy, one one guy from day one and two, and then they'll certainly add one like sixth, seventh round, but not mm-hmm. like to contribute immediately. I think DK last one here. <laughs> Let's say for whatever reason the Bills don't take a receiver twenty eight. There's a run and they don't want to reach or whatever happens, mm-hmm. and they have the 60th pick. You have guys, uh, receivers on your board around 60-ish. We have Ricky Parasola, receiver out of Florida. Jalen McMillan, the receiver out of Washington. Malik Washington out of Virginia. That's kind of confusing. Uh, Javon Baker to UCF. Mm-hmm. Who's a guy that fits uh, Buffalo that you think if they were there at 60 that Bills fans could rejoice and be like, hey, everything's going to be okay. Don't uh, I mean, I think uh, Pearsall would make a lot of sense for them, but Javon Baker really does stylistically fit what they want to do because he's a outside guy, a vertical threat. Again, really good ball control or, or sorry really good body control at the catch point like he goes and makes some pretty ridiculous catches he's got some twitch to him um so i think he would make sense stylistically with what they're trying to do i think pierce would be very good too i don't think jalen mcmillan makes a lot of sense for them because he mainly played in the slot at washington if jalen polk is there in the second round i think that would be an outstanding pick for them so yeah they they could certainly stop and also by the way xavier Leggett might be there i know that he has some big question marks about his overall prospect profile, but he is the type of player that would really fit with them, I think. Um, so yeah, they could certainly wait until the second round. There's still going to be probably like three or four guys that make a ton of sense for them in, in the sixties area. And um, also speak, you mentioned Ricky Parasol to Florida, the, the ringer NFL draft show has to issue a correction. Uh, we regret the error, but we talked about Ricky Parasol's tattoo and how it's the dumbest tattoo I've ever seen in my entire life. And maybe we oh. can throw this up on, on the Spotify app, but we talked a lot about how Ricky Parasol is this massive tattoo, el- like elbow to wrist tattoo of a roulette wheel with dice. <laughs> and it says bet on me. We talked about how ridiculous he doesn't know how gambling works. We did not even mention that he has like a straight flush of cards 
like ace king queen jack t- but instead of ace king it s- spells out the word humble <laughs> right. and it just says humble like you got dealt a royal flush of humble except except humble is six letters so it doesn't even really make sense no, as, a, no. as a royal flush uh i gotta say that's that's pretty damn humble of him to, to tattoo humble on his arm that's like kind of the first thing a humble person does is to write it on his body. <laughs> You're just like killing me over here. I'm just Having coughing. An attack. Sorry. Every time I laugh, I start coughing. I've had, I've had this terrible cough for like that's, last two weeks. That might be the second worst NFL tattoo I've ever seen uh, or football tattoo. Dan Lanning, head coach of Oregon. Google that. Dude, that's, that's sick. A tough Dan one. Lanning's There's... tattoo is of his wife. Just, just his is it wife sick? on his... I don't know if it's sick, but it's ridiculous. Dan Lanning, it's Google, ridiculous. Those are very Dan different Lanning, things. Oregon tattoo. And if you Google that, the first thing comes up, Dan Lanning, the coach at Oregon, has a giant tattoo. I think it's on his chest. And it's basically of his wife's chest. And it's like his Flex. wife wearing no shirt. With It's just his <laughs> and wife she has with tattoos. tattoos. Yeah, of like different of schools he's Of like the he's places he's coached. <laughs> so it's like his tattoos are of, his ta- of her with her tattoos. But like, it's just... On the, pantheon, also, like on the pantheon of... Tattoos you would imagine Kenny Powers has, <laughs> yeah. like Dan Lanning, Ricky Pearsall. Those guys yes. are up there on that, hundred percent. And you yeah. need that to be a college coach. It's why Oregon is such a juggernaut is because he has that tattoo. There's no other reason. Right. It's Email us at ringerfantasyfootballgmail.com if you know other people with insane tattoos or just uh, we'll always take tattoos. Too. Wait, what was always the correction? Take. Just that it said humble. Uh, we the didn't correction was it. that we didn't oh, okay. point out the most hor- the most ridiculous part of the tattoo. We were joking. Got about. it. Got it. Got it. Uh, I also got to point out Odell Beckham has a Dark Knight tattoo of the Joker, like a really realistic one of Heath Ledger. And it's directly between like Barack Obama and like Lil Wayne. And I'm like, and Martin Luther King, like that's who's like flanking the Joker. And I'm like, what do they talk about? And it's like. I mean, even Lil Wayne being there with Barack and Martin Luther. It's just like a wild. Yeah. All right. Anyway, Uh, you guys want to do some emails? Emails. And it's a mailbag. All right. Yeah. Emails. I want to start with Jess again, because Jess asked two good questions. Jez. 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 I think it's Jess. Anyway, Jez. Maybe it's Jez. E- email us Jess and tell us how to pronounce it. I think it. the S is silent. Yeah, I should have replied before. I don't know. Jez? Jez? Je? Maybe. Jez. Jez. Shuf- I should you know, ask Liz. Gonna... My wife speaks French. So does Jez. That'd be I feel useful. Like French. Yeah. Flex. Also, left, you could use way. Google. No, it's cooler oh. when I ask Liz. <laughs> All right. Jez asks... What quarterback in the last five to 10 or longer years whom you consider a bust now do you think could have been a, a decent starter if given the Jordan Love treatment? First one that came to mind uh, was if Mac Jones was actually drafted by the Niners like everybody thought Same. he was. That was my first thought too, Craig. Yeah. Um, like there's a chance that we have no idea who Brock Purdy is right now and Mac Jones has a Super Bowl ring. You think that's legitimately in play? Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I had the exact same thought. I think like Mac Jones, especially when you take into account like how pretty well he played as a rookie like he looked pretty decent like there was I think a good amount of optimism with around him around what he could become in the NFL and then everything just fell apart in year two and then year three of course was just a disaster so I'm actually still of the opinion like Mac Jones could end up being a starter in the NFL again he's not necessarily like we haven't necessarily written him off totally as a bust um I think you know the other guys of course that we've probably over defended over the years is Justin Fields. I think just his, the way that they sort of switched offensive coordinators on him and never really gave him a very good supporting cast, all these things. There's, there's a lot of mitigating circumstances with why he struggled so much. I think early on in his career, Heifetz has got his cat on screen here. He's Great cat. All the wires. He's like a rag doll. You can really just do whatever you want all with right. him. Come back up here. He's just a little baby. I also think, I think if you want to go the other way around, if you want to go to 2018, the, the Baker, Mayfield, Josh Allen, Darnold, Josh Rosen year, pretty much so of those four quarterbacks, Josh Allen's the only one who really worked out. Baker's doing okay now, but, you know, had an interesting start. <coughs> if 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 Josh Allen is on any other team, if Josh Allen is on that Cardinals team, on the Jets, on the Browns, I, I'm not sure he is who he is today. And I think if Sam Darnold was on the Bills, Sam Darnold might be, a, a, you know, on year seven of his career right now, starting. Yeah. I, I totally agree. Like, this is why I'm so big on nature versus nurture. They brought Baker Mayfield went to the Browns and had five coordinators in three years. He went, er, er, he went to the winless Cleveland Browns. The does, bills don't look great, but the bills made the playoffs a year and a half earlier without Josh Allen before he went there. And then on that note, instead of quarterbacks who made it, I Russell Wilson went to the Legion of Boom Seahawks. I don't think he's anything anywhere else. Dak Prescott 
got to play behind the best roster in the NFL, the best line in the NFL. I don't know if Dak becomes anything anywhere else. Uh, I think that's the case for like way more people than we ever want to admit. Like Kirk I Cousins think- started his career with like five head coaches in the NFL. Like if he goes to a different staff, like they might never have made anything of him to start. And if they don't get the good start, they don't get the chance. So I also am not going to lie, though, I misread this question and I actually thought it meant something else. So I had a list of quarterbacks that I thought would have succeeded in this era of the NFL that wouldn't have been or that from that's not what they asked. Right. But I went I went down the Terrell Pryor wormhole from Ohio State. Mm. And I'm like, dude, if Terrell Pryor came out now, Terrell Pryor for the youngins, six foot four, 228 pounds, reportedly at a four, three, three, 40 yard dash. So that's basically like taller Brian Thomas at LSU. But he plays quarterback. That's like what people want. Right. Six, four, 228. That's what you want a quarterback. Right, DK? Yeah, I Terrell mean, he, Pryor yeah. got so Terrell Pryor got suspended at Ohio State because he paid for tattoos with signing footballs. Talk about like a like that's a, he literally got suspended. Jim Trestle resigned as the coach of Ohio State because they signed footballs instead of paying. Money. Now, like they would literally nothing matters anymore. We're, they'd be paid in yeah. commercials for the tattoo shop now. Can't believe and, that used to matter. Do you yeah. know what I didn't know? So Terrell Pryor got kicked out of Ohio State and had to do the supplemental draft. He got kicked out after the NFL draft happened. Do you know what I realized? The NFL suspended him five games to uphold the NCAA ruling. So he, so Terrell dumb. Pryor signed for footballs in Ohio State tattoo shop. And then his first five NFL games, he wasn't paid because so he ridiculous. did that. Yeah. And then he ended up being a thousand yard receiver anyway. But I'm like him as a quarterback now, like I, I think would have been it's a totally different era. Uh, it would have been incredible. I like that a lot. That's a good one. Uh, not to totally just commit to the entire draft class from 2021, but. The Trey Lance thing, I think, is another one that we have to look at where if you're talking about specifically the Jordan Love track where he, you come in, you're behind a, you know, MVP caliber type player, or very good, all, like all pro pro bowl type player for four years. How, how long did he sit for? Three or four, three years or four years? I can't remember. Trey Lance. I No, no, no. Uh, no, Jordan, Jordan Love. Love. I think he sat for three. Three full years. Yeah. Yeah. And so if you have Trey Lance, who's again, we talked about this prior to the draft, like historically low number of pass attempts in high school and college for like a first round quarterback, like unheard of, unheard of lack of experience at the quarterback position, like having the experience of sitting for three years, learning the offense, knowing the language da- like getting it down pat, knowing exactly where he needs to go with everything, everything, having a mentor, like all that stuff, I think would have really, really helped Trey Lance. He, I mean, he came in, he was the backup initially, but then, kind of came in because Jimmy G got hurt and then he got hurt and he had another major injury. It's like, it just like threw his career track completely off course. And he's another guy who I think could have really, really benefited from that type of development arc. I think actually more than anyone we talked about here, like he, he would have benefited from that. That's a really good segue. We have a couple other quarterback related emails here, DK. And that's a really good point though, because I think the Niners are on record saying when they made the trade for the, to move up to three in the 2021 draft, the Niners did not know who they wanted. They were between, they were like, there's enough quarterbacks we're going to pick later. And at the time they made it, they thought they wanted Mac Jones and then they changed their mind to Trey Lance. But to your point, I think that Kyle Shanahan was swayed by the songs, the siren song of Trey Lance's mobility, the ceiling of the offense being higher, but that they were swayed, but they hadn't made the total commitment that, Hey, Kyle, you have to be patient with this kid if you're going to do it. And they didn't have the commitment to that. So with that said, I think like that's a good idea that there's sometimes the idea of what a quarterback can be. But is there like an organizational philosophical commitment to like what you're going to do with these people? So with that said, we have an email here from Chris. 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 As a Pats fan, uh, I'm assuming let's assume Drake May is not available at number three. I would rather trade down and target Michael Penix Jr. in the late first, early second to take Jaden Daniels. Am I a lunatic? And it keeps going, but I want to know right now, DK, do you think uh, Chris is a lunatic for saying I'll trade down rather than take Jen Daniels? Nah. Or factor in that the trade down would get you presumably right. a Michael Penix and perhaps a receiver as well. No, oh, I don't I think mean. that's a lunatic idea. We don't know. We don't know enough about what's going to happen. So because Chris says... It's interesting to me how many similarities Michael Penix and Jaden Daniels have. Both are older prospects. Both were buoyed by excellent surrounding talent. Both, either by injury history or play style, could correctly be labeled injury risks in the NFL. And the main difference, in my view, is Daniels obviously is an infinitely more dynamic runner, while Michael Penix might have a more dynamic arm. So it's crazy to think that a triumvirate 
of Michael Penix Jr. with like a Brian Thomas at LSU with if they get the 23rd pick. And then also like Troy Fautanu in Minnesota. Uh, sorry, with the 11th pick. Is that a better core to build around then than say Jaden Daniels and then getting some tackle like Patrick Paul and Jalen McMillan at receiver? Right. I don't know that this is the eternal question of the draft, right? Like this is the what ifs that make it so difficult. Um, I think it all comes down to like how you feel about Jaden Daniels, right? Like as a podcast, it feels like we've soured on him a little bit, even though I still, you like guys it. have, I, I think Jaden Daniels could be awesome. Yeah. I you mean, guys have soured. I think, I think generally speaking, when we talk about players so much, it tends to like build one way or the other versus like trying to be just right down the middle on everything. But I still like him. I still got him, I think, as my 10th player or something like that. So it's not, I'm not really low on him, but there's just some concerns around him that I don't have with other players at the quarterback position. So if you, do think, you think that Jaden Daniels is going to be awesome, like you should absolutely take him there. Do you think if the Pats draft Jaden Daniels, they should sit him for a year? No. Well, that's the thing related to Trey Lance. Who are the quarterbacks that would be best suited to sit for a year and get not Jordan Love treatment, but at least Mahomes. Mahomes sat for a full year and came in like at the end of the season, week 17. But like, who are the quarterbacks that you think would be best served to sit for a year no matter where they went? I mean, probably J.J. McCarthy because of his lack of experience. I think with Jaden Daniels, he's started for five or six years now. You know, he started so many games. Second only in this class to Bo Nix in terms of total starts in his college career. He's got plenty of experience. The question, I think, when it comes down to if New England takes him at three, is do you sit him simply because their offense sucks? Not because they're worried about his lack of experience or whatever they want to get. You know, they want to get him more reps in the offense or learn the language. I think that, you know, he's had so much experience that that is not as big of a deal to me. It's it's purely like, do we want yeah, to throw him out there with these shitty skill players and just hope the, he does well? Like that the mental the and physical consequences of playing in this Patriots right. offense as a rookie this year might be worth less than, you know, actually giving him the experience of playing on the field as a rookie. I don't know. And I'm curious, why does McCarthy need to sit and why not Drake? I feel like Drake May needs to sit too. I think McCarthy needs to sit because he's just the most inexperienced. Drake May has less experience. Drake May has fewer coaches than McCarthy does. I mean, I th you could make the same argument about Drake May. I think that's fine. They're both like 21 that. years old. McCarthy's yeah. been in less positions. Well, they're, they're almost 20, 22. Almost 22. 21 going on 20, 20, 22. Like, yeah. I was just 28, so I'm technically 28. Yeah. Mm. As, as much as I am 30, I am equally 28. I was recently almost 26. I feel like you guys don't understand how age works with when it comes to the NFL. We talk about the, the number that they are during that season. No, I, I, I get how it works. It's like when you want to but, imply that they might get worse, you say they're almost 31. Yes. And then when you want to imply that they might be OK still, you say they just turned 30. And not he's not saying you. He's saying the, the, the proverbial you. We all do that. You know, when I want to sound older, mm. I say I'm almost 30. I just caught myself from another mispronunciation. Keep it in my own head. OK. Almost. But you caught yourself from doing it or you did it? I didn't hear one. I did. I, I was about to say something in my hand, my head, and then I realized my friend screamed at me for saying something wrong. I'm going to move on. You'll never find out what it was. Damn. Damn. I feel like um, it's kind of hard to be Heifetz now. Like every time he speaks, he's just terrified. I keep wondering, what are the other words out there that I don't know? <laughs> I, I Like, because they're out there. And I that one, I just found out one in my head. You're just going to get word canceled at any moment. Yeah. <laughs> word cancel. All right. Spe uh, last one, the quarterbacks here. Billy. Billy, Billy. Hey, William. William Bob, William Simmons. If you had to rank last year's quarterback draft class and this year's quarterback draft class together, how would they rank as prospects? And this is before we knew what they were going to do in the NFL. So just as prospects, how would you combine the CJ Stroud, Bryce Young class with the current Caleb Williams class? Ooh, that's a very good question. I probably would do Caleb Stroud. Hold on. Let me pull up all the names here. Give me, and you give had me Stroud like a, as your number one quarterback last year. Right. Yeah. Caleb Stroud. And then you're in the like Drake May, May Bryce Young, Anthony Richardson, Jaden Daniels category. Yeah. I'm just looking back at what I had last year. I had CJ Stroud number two, Young three, which is not looking good. I had Anthony Richardson uh, 11th overall. And then this year I've got it. Caleb Williams number one, Drake May number two. I, I think if I was stacking them up, it would be Caleb Williams, CJ Stroud, Drake May as my top three. This email is from Connor. 
Con. Connor. Con heads. One, one, almost one percent. Almost one percent. Almost, we're almost on the board. Uh, my wife and I are having our. This is Connor. My wife and I are having our first kid this summer. Shout out Solak. Nice. Even though there is plenty of time to decide this, I want your advice as to whether I should pass down all of my fandoms. This is this is good. For context, I'm a Pittsburgh Steelers fan in the NFL, an LA Angels fan in baseball, an LA Lakers fan in, in the NBA. Anaheim Ducks in, in NHL, an SMU fan for college sports. I grew up in Orange County, hence Angels, Lakers, Ducks. Have family in Pittsburgh, hence the Steelers. And I went to college at SMU, hence SMU. My wife went to Colorado Boulder. So I already think that SMU fandom is a long shot considering Coach Prime. But I wonder whether I should force, quote unquote, force my pro teams on my son or let him choose his own favorites. DK. Yeah. Should you force your fan? Will you force your Seahawks fandom on your son or would you let him pick? No, I'm not going to force the Seahawks fandom on my son, but the context Wrong. of where we live, it's very likely he's not going to have a choice. You know what I mean? Like, he's going to be around Seahawks fans. He's going to be watching Seahawks on Sundays. He's going to be just in the Seahawks sphere of, of fandom. I, I didn't choose to be any of the of, a fan of any of the teams I ended up being a fan of. I just ultimately live in this region and therefore became fans. I think when it comes to teams that are outside your your zone or wherever you live, it's usually because of a family connection. Craig, your dad is a Steelers fan, right? Mom. Your mom is a Steelers fan, so therefore you're a Steelers fan. I don't. I honestly don't think he, your kid, I, I don't think you force it on him, but I, he also doesn't have a choice. It's just, I don't think you, you force it. You just become it, part of it. But you're not exactly like dissuading them either. I, I think there's nothing better than rooting for a team with your parents. So, you right. know, I, I think... I think you kind of should nudge your child in that direction. And more so, you should particularly nudge them away from the teams you hate. That's almost more important. Like, I, my son is not going to be a Lakers fan. I'm just, even if I yeah, live in LA. Like, like, he's not. That's the real thing. Is if your son saw Debo Samuel doing something cool on TV and was like, I want a Debo jersey, like, you would not get him a Debo right, jersey. Right, correct. I'm but not going to like let Metcalf. Calvin be a 49ers fan. You 100%. need to, li like, you, you got to lie and say no, the Niners are a terrible organization <laughs> and, you know, whatever you can do to dissuade your your son of the, those young, in those young formative years. It's like my mom, when I was a kid, told me that I was allergic to dark colored soda and that I didn't drink it. <laughs> and to this day, I don't like Great it. Great trick. Yeah. So, you know, whatever it takes. For yeah, Connor specifically, I wouldn't worry about Boulder because, like, Deion Sanders is not going to be in Colorado for very long. This kid will no. have memories of Deion Sanders in Colorado. He's gone. It, so Yeah. If like if like Bluey ever gets canceled, DK, just tell Calvin that the San Francisco 49ers are responsible for that. <laughs> Wait, DK, what did you do? That. Didn't you tell him once you, you just told him Paw Patrol broke? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Paw, <laughs> Paw Patrol, terrible show. Awful, <laughs> awful show. It gets him like riled up and wanting to do violence and things like this. I hate that show. Wait, and so Bluey's like the best kid show ever, but Paw Patrol's like a nightmare? Paw Patrol is the worst. And there is a... Just million toys for Paw Patrol everywhere. Every other person that I know has Paw Patrol toys. There's just, it's just, you were inundated with Paw Patrol. Um, and I, I just told him it was broken and he, he bought it. Debo what Samuel a, what broke a dumb it. little kid. Yeah. yeah. Debo Samuel, I hate that guy, broke Paw Patrol. We should definitely, you know, boycott the 49ers. Where does Paw Patrol air? Like, who makes it? <laughs> I mean, I don't know, I don't know what, like, it's on Netflix or. Prime it's on Netflix. Yeah. Well, we talked about this. So no, kid probably, shows are these weird on things. It's on Prime or something. But kid shows have these weird pockets where like people know SpongeBob who watch SpongeBob and their parents, but then no one below or above. Like there's weird. Like I don't know anything about Bluey except literally through UDK. But then kids and then your generation of parents will all know Bluey. Yeah. Have you seen that clip uh, that of Jim Harbaugh talking about how much he loves SpongeBob? No. Dude, Harbaugh is the what? weirdest guy ever. <laughs> I think Harbaugh I believe. Loves <laughs> Harbaugh loves Spongebob because he's like eternally positive and he like loves Spongebob's mindset that like every day he wakes up happy as can be, like ready to attack the day. Who's got it better than Spongebob? <laughs> Harbaugh, Harbaugh, you, do you know the scene from uh, <laughs> from Entourage where uh, the agent guy runs into, um, oh shit, the crazy guy. What's the crazy guy's name? Busey, My, Gary uh, Busey. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, he, he runs into Gary Busey on the beach. He's like, Gary Busey, I used to represent you. He, he, or he's like, do you know who I am? He's like, I used to represent you. He's like, oh yeah, you're that gut maggot <laughs> or whatever. And then Ari, Ari's like, you're going to spin off of this planet. I love it. <laughs> Keep it up. Like every time I hear anything Jim Harbaugh says, I'm like, you're going to spin off of this planet. I love it. Keep it up. He's like, 
He's like, I love that SpongeBob guy. He wakes up every day, happy as can be. It doesn't matter what's going on in his life. He tries to see the positive, work hard. He's like, Squidward? I don't like that guy. Negative. Not into him. You're going to spit on this we- planet. I love it. He's and like I would talking- do anything to just sit there with Jim Harbaugh, like observing Jim Harbaugh with like his children and grandchildren, like just watching like the Alaskan bullworm episode of SpongeBob or just like you, you got to stay away from the hooks. That's true. There's a lot of hooks in life. <laughs> You're a Maybe gut we'll maggot get Jim on. with no guts. God. <laughs> what are you talking about, Jim? Should, yeah, we'll, we'll see if we have a gut maggot award for 2024. Wow. I believe anything but Harbaugh. He's in the Tyson zone. Uh, yes. All right, Connor, good luck. All right. Next up, we have an email from Shane from Ireland. Shane. Shane. Uh, I, another one I can't pronounce. The, did you saw the Chiefs sign this guy, Louis? I think it's Louis Reese Zamet. I'm sorry, I'm butchering it. Louis Reese Zamet. He's like this incredible rugby player. Rugby player? Yeah. Call him L- LRZ. So Shane emails in LRZ, Welsh ex professional rugby player qual- at a quality one at that, has signed as a receiver for the Chiefs. Do you think here any other international players of an impact as a playmaker? Do you think there will be more international players getting selected in the coming years with more exposure to the NFL? And I was curious. We thought of this, DK. We didn't talk about this with the kickoff, but the new kickoff rules mm. where like the kickers where he was. But now all the, the the tackling team is like way closer and they have to. It's going to be a touchback to the 30. They're going to, I think, eight out of every 10 kickoffs they're hoping will be returned. The Chiefs sign this guy. I think he's going to be a kick returner for them mm. because be I fine. think they're going to. Tr- turn all these kickoffs into rugby because I, I forget who pointed this out, but LRZ, this guy can be, you know, the Travis Kelsey play, obviously you guys know, but he did the lateral. The, the lateral. Turning. Yeah. I think that's going to be like every kickoff with this guy because he can throw a football left or right. Like Kelsey did 25 yards, but he can do it mid stride. And I feel like the spacing, they're going to have to be so disciplined that I kind of think they, there is going to be like a bunch of weird, like two, like you used to do this in Madden, but two returners back, and it's going to be like one Kadarius Tony and one mm-hmm. rugby player. Ooh, and I do think there's going to be like a lot of these. Um, I think it's going to be a slow burn type of deal where, you know, it happened in the NBA, right? Over the years, as the game grew internationally, you start to see more and more players come to the NBA from overseas. And I think that probably will happen with football. I think we're at the very beginning of it. It's not going to be like every one of these rugby stars turns into an NFL player. I mean, we've, we've, I think we've seen a bunch of quote unquote former superstars in, in rugby or whatever it is come over to the NFL and most of them don't really pan out. But that doesn't mean none of them will. I think Jordan Mailata, wasn't he a rugby player? Uh, I believe so, yeah. Or I don't know, you know, because there's a different there's different leagues that I don't know the details around, but um he's he's an international player. I'm sure it's gonna be a thing. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be just only grow. In the future, also, there's a bunch of international punters and kickers, you know, because of their skills growing up playing soccer or, or rugby or whatever. I do feel like the lateral is the next big innovation in the NFL. Like, I think that Tony Kelsey play that that blew up our show last year. I think stuff like that, the hook and ladder, is really innovative and, if done properly, could change a lot. I think, yeah, moving the ball around after a, the first completion and handing the ball off, I think... If you can figure that out, would change the game. I 100% agree. It's like there's not really incentive for innovation, uh, but that if coaches actually could take risks, that would be Like insane. if I'm a good team or a really bad team, like if I'm the Chiefs and I'm up 20 in the fourth, I'm running that shit. And if I'm the Cardinals and I'm down 20 in the fourth, I'm running that shit. The one I keep thinking about also like big pick like 50 years from now is like why didn't they – Ravens just draft Anthony Richardson and like, why don't they just run the option with Lamar and Anthony Richardson have two quarterbacks? And that's something that now seems insane. But I do think the idea of like a quadruple option, basically, where it's like RP, RPO of just totally. like you have a run like, oh, I'll throw it or hand it off. And then Anthony Richardson can also throw it or, or keep running. And it's, it's like, there, there's a million things like I still can't believe a quarterback hasn't figured out. There hasn't been a quarterback that can throw with both hands. I, I can't believe yeah. a, 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 well, a quarterback. Are, yeah. I can't believe a quarterback hasn't figured out how to punt. That still blows my mind that Josh Allen can't be the punter for this team and change. You can't downs do forever. two things, Craig. Yeah, it's like Roethlisberger just did it like all how the time. You. He would just punt. You're telling and me Anthony no Richardson else. can't punt? You know how hard that would be if it's fourth and five and Anthony Richardson's back there to punt? It would change everything. He can't do two things. That's it's it's a really good call, Craig. That like fourth and three, and then you need everyone up, and then he's like, all right, shotgun. He just punts it. Yeah, like Roethlisberger did that for like ten years. I don't know why people aren't doing it. I really don't. Save a uh, roster spot. 
By the way, Mylata did play. He played rugby league in Australia previous to coming to the U.S. He, and he entered the NFL through the International Pathway Program, which is where we see a lot of the international players come through. And he was a seventh round pick. Man, imagine that. What a gamble by the Eagles. Great job by them. I'm still mad the kickers can't punt either, honestly. You can't do two things. Don't even think about it. All right. Another one here. You want to do one on switching phantoms, Craig, or do you want (laughs) someone um, who's really mad at you about what you put in your body? Let's do the second one. (laughs) He's mad at me about the poppy? Nope. Raw milk. Everyone's mad. This about is raw from milk. Um, Redacted, <laughs> who's a do- confirmed doctor. Redacted. He's a confirmed doctor. Craig mentioned the other day he's drinking raw I'm milk. A I cannot get too. into too many details because Doctor Nick. Yeah, Doctor Redacted. I can't get into too many details because of HIPAA, but I am a doctor and a maternal <laughs> sure. fetal medicine specialist. I've seen moms and their babies get tough infections from raw milk, even to the point of death, bleeding out of every orifice, including the eyes. Jesus, Craig. Please, please, please do not drink or discuss raw milk. I can't even discuss it. Uh, that, that <laughs> he's going he's going full Will Smith on me. Keep raw milk out your mouth. <laughs> he's saying you're yeah, you're canceled for, for talking about raw milk. Who what's this person's name? Redacted. They're a doctor. Redacted. They're a real doctor. Well, I, I, I emailed back and forth with somebody uh, who is a microbiologist and, and he warned me against drinking raw milk. We actually corresponded back and forth. I sent him again. I had it one time. I bought it as a one-off. I want to let everybody. Did you know. reply like, like you should look into that? I'm not. I wasn't like planning on like only drinking raw milk for the rest of my life. I, I bought it at an extremely nice grocery store, and, and I read the website uh, of, of everything they do. They have a testing process to make sure that like the bacteria level is low. Oh, it's, it's not like I just like milked a cow in my backyard and is like that's what I'm drinking. Just forever. an influencer. I yeah. I understand there is risk involved. It's legal in many states. There has, there's, there's clearly a reason why it's legal in some states. I'm not drinking raw milk all the time so everybody can relax. And and this microbiologist who I corresponded with um, was very nice about it. And he basically was like, I see what you're saying. Uh, this, this company where you bought it doesn't look that bad, but it's still a little opaque. If you're not feeling well when you drink it, I wouldn't continue to drink it. And he had diarrhea advice. twice right after drinking it for the record. I actually, when I had it the second time, I was perfectly fine. Don't drink it. It's how bad. bad was that? Uh, how bad was that first time? It, uh, well, not bad it, enough to drink it again. Apparently, it was honestly like it wasn't like I had an upset stomach. It was just like like an it was like a laxative. Hmm. So do with that what you will. Well, at least you had the right thing coming out of the right orifices or whatever. Yeah, not blood <laughs> out of the eyes. That's tough. No. If it, right. if if blood coming from your eyes is one of the potential side effects, I'm not doing that. But I, I'm I'm flattered by everyone's concern, and I want to let everybody know on the record, I, I am not, and I, I was never planning on making raw milk a consistent part of my diet. Why are you so into raw milk? What? What? what why? Yeah, dude. After hearing all, all this stuff, after eat. hearing about the bleeding eyes, you still are not like, okay, I'm done. I am done. I told you, I, I tried it one time. I mean, it, I, I the cart is in my fridge right now, but I haven't seems had it like since. You're, seems like you're being pretty defiant about it. You're like, I'm not going to make it a regular part of <laughs> well, my- Well, people are freaking out. They're, acid. Like, they're like, Craig is going to die because he drinks raw milk for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I'm like, He's like I had I it might, one time. Craig's like, look, the, the the raw motor oil, I get that it's bad for you. I might, I mean, I'm not going to like give it up, but I'll just be really, I'll, every once in a while, I'll drink it. No pain, no gain. <laughs> You know Andy Benoit, who is the writer at SI, who okay. actually now works for Sean McVay, who who talked about how he'd chug like a like a half gallon of milk in the parking lot. Yeah, he had to like hide levels. it from his girlfriend. Yeah. How, how do all the doctors problem. at home feel about raw eggs? Worked for Rocky. Did it? I think he so. lost. He, I mean, it's a fictional movie. <laughs> uh, how dare you? <laughs> Get my advice from winners. All right, we had a we had a story from e- Aton. Wait, what, no, also, sorry, Rocky won. Akon. I don't know what you're talking about. He, he he lost in the first he lost in the first movie by like technicality, and then he he won the next three movies. Did he have raw eggs in the other movies? Oh, he, I'm sure he kept up in the raw eggs. He didn't have enough yeah. in the first. That see that yeah, that's the problem. I, Wait, he took that Ivan Drago. From, Come on, this movie. This sorry, that movie. This email is from Akon, and that is how you pronounce it. Akon. Okay, Akon. No, it's was, it's Akon. It's Aton. Yeah. He literally said pronounced Akon, but with a T. He literally wrote it in the email. He said pronounced Yeah, Akon, yeah, Akon with, with a, T. a T. So it's Aton. <laughs> His name is E-Y-T-A-N. So it's Aton. I 
Mm. All right. That's fine. All right. Well, I read it. That's right. fine. That's not a big deal. Aton. We don't have to turn every one of these into a thing. I know. I'm tired of bullying you. Let's just move on. Yeah. Look. I just saw the chance for you guys to be like, hey, con. I got really excited. Like, Convict hey, music. Aton. Yeah. All right. Well, well he's going to get embarrassed. This emergency toilet paper situation happened to me at 11th grade. Oh. One night in May. Oh. I was heading to the beach to do a bonfire for a friend's birthday. Doc Weiler for at Craig. Nice. That's this. like the only beach in LA that has like the built in fire pits. Hmm. My buddies and I stopped at the small fast food joint on the way. I got a double pastrami burger with a fried egg on top. And oh, yes, Ooh, I, I'm oh, assuming boy. that's from Johnny's pastrami. So uh, if I'm yeah. right, let me know. Aton. On the way from dinner, I was having Acon. occasional feelings of dread in my stomach. Thank you, Akon, for the email. <laughs> My stomach going back and forth, having to go for a minute. And then all of a sudden, the feeling disappears. We make it to the beach. And at this point, I'm sweating. I'm doing breathing exercises to hold this in. I hop out of the car. Beef batch. Beef. Beat. I can't speak. Beach bathroom is locked. Ugh. Tough. Sharp my way to the porta potty. Why don't you jump in the ocean? Hold on. That's coming, I think. Oh, okay. At this point, I agree. the night is... At just this point, just the straight ruined. run to the ocean is what I'm doing. So he says, I then take a monster dump, dump. All of a sudden, I realize that there's no toilet paper in this porta potty. Luckily, had a lot of napkins in my car from the takeout. Oh, my Lord. My friends bring me the napkins. Hmm. That's nice. But I did not have enough napkins. So what did Isn't I do? Isn't it here my, to the five, five wipe only rule? Yeah. No. Five blind my wipes. Friend, my friends five noticed I actually had wipes. five blind wipes. Yeah. <laughs> my friends noticed I actually have old leftover receipts from when I. Oh my god, out that's back. desperation right there. At that point, I, like, I, I, how much is it actually picking up, and how much is it just smearing it around? I, <laughs> I get. It, I don't. It's a lateral move. I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Diminishing returns on that. <laughs> he says, I was not going to just run into the Pacific Ocean at night in May to clean off because one, it's freezing. And two, oh, the girl fair. I'd been flirting with for a month at that point was there. And I had no chance of sealing the deal if I took that route. Well, dude, well, come on. Give up that dream if you if this is happening to you. Fucking hear, wait for another chance. Like you cannot hear me out, though. continue. What are we talking about? He's going to still try after this? Hear me out, Aton. Psycho. He could have ran into the ocean and been like, cool badass i don't care how cold it is like i'm taking a dip yeah don't want to get in the ocean no yeah exactly you know what i mean i'm gonna take a midnight swim secretly kind of evacuate your bowels and then yep. head back and head back to the the bonfire and warm your shorts that, that yep. would have been this is like me. the quarterback who can't just throw it out of bounds i mean live to play another down fella <laughs> just throw it away fucking slide i don't care <laughs> like just go home at this point go home what are we doing what are we talking about next steps here this is a disaster you're not trying to get through this. It's been a long time, DK, I think, since you've been in the dating pool. That's why you, you can't understand Jesus. Yeah, you've been out of here. There's always tomorrow, pal- fella. All right, we got an email from Sean. 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 Wait, hold on. What was the yeah. end? He he just, he had a... He, oh, he burned, he uh, gave up on the girl and then burned his, the pants with his father. Oh, yeah, that's that's what you do. That was the move. <laughs> he lit them on fire and burned I, them? I think so. Fire pits. I like that. That's great. So he did exactly what I think he should have done. And the end of the email says, and my mom still doesn't know what happened. That's great. The dad, the dad and the son quietly take care of the issue. I love that. In the backyard. Right, this one's from Sean. Sean. All your talk about wiping made me think back to when I was in high school. All your me, talk about wiping. But not too much my, talk about I it. I know. Right? Me and my friends were having a conversation about wiping after you poop. The six of us were 50-50 on different styles. Standing versus sitting folding versus wadding and the standers were blown away that the sitters existed Mm -hmm. and the folders were blown away that the waters existed and vice versa learned a lot that day mainly that there's more than one way to crack an egg yeah yeah wow i i had this revelation years ago with my friends where i learned that there were people who stood up to wipe yeah. and it, it blew my fucking brain is that that's the minority way of doing it right like in terms of Pure numbers, I, I guess, like in the United States. Pure numbers. Sean do we do a here, poll? who emailed us, signed off on the email saying, "Sincerely, Team Stand and Wad, which mm. are the two. I I would not have picked those sides. I'm I'm a sit and fold kind of guy. <laughs> well, Wad is like bad, bad. Wad is bad for the planet. Like that's. I don't understand issue. Wad. Like you, surface area is the name of the game, and the Wad is not getting you that. Yeah, the Wad, <laughs> the Wad. 
DK's scratching. You're high up on the face with the scratch there, DK. DK I'm, on my, I'm scratching my neck. Oh, okay. Give me a break. Standing uh, is just a lot of work. Get a bidet, everyone. It solves all this. <laughs> Brings everyone together. Yeah. yeah. Um, Should we do a poll? Stand oh. or sit? We could do. Yeah, well, we, we need to do figure out how to wad it. Yes. We could do stand and fold, stand and wad. There sit we go. And fold, sit and wad. Oh wow! I can't wait. It's to like the Myers this. Briggs thing, or what? I still what personality can't... type are you? I still love that, Craig. You said that Liz thought when you flushed twice, it's she didn't realize it was <laughs> because there's so much paper. She thought there was just so much poop matter. <laughs> matter. <laughs> like that's. Well, I was like, "What do you? Who do you think I am? What do you think I'm eating?" All right. We also we talked a lot, but we're also about showering. We've been talking about poop. We've been talking about showering. Yeah, we had the shower power Connor. rankings last episode. Yeah. Oh yeah, shower power know, hour. I want to know the results of this question. Yeah, this is from a co- co- different Connor. 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 So DK, you had passionately argued that the most important part of the shower is getting the um, priority number one. The crotchal butt. crotchal region. The crotchal region. Crotch butt combo. Craig yeah. had passionately argued for armpits. Yeah. So. Connor says, I'm 100% with DK on the crotchal region cleaning being the most important part of the shower. <laughs> and I believe I'm uniquely qualified to weigh in here. Wow. A few years ago, I hiked from Mexico to Canada. Mexico to Canada. That's far. There's a, there's a country uh, in between there, and he, <laughs> he hiked it. The, which is along a 2,650-mile Pacific Crest Trail. Nice. It's 2,600 miles. It took a little under four months for about 20 to 25 miles a day. That is one of the most impressive human feats I've ever heard of. That's wild. He says, and in that time period, Connor says, due to the lack of plumbing, I took about 10 real showers, not including like dunking in a lake or river. In four months. Obviously, my my entire body uh, smelled like, what'd you say? Sorry, I, 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 you know, when you like misspeak and you know the people at home are going to hear it, but you do. <laughs> yeah. So you're like, I got to correct myself. <laughs> like, like a couple episodes ago, I said that CD Lamb was the best receiver in the draft class he was in, but I, it was actually Justin Jefferson. I knew it was Jeff, Justin Jefferson, but I, I, I didn't, I was like, it's not worth it for me to like cut everybody off and be like, it's actually, and then somebody tweeted me, like, how did you not, how dare know you, it sir? Was Justin Jefferson. I'm like, ah. It's a real pickle as a podcaster. But anyway, I said two miles and I meant, I, I said two showers instead of 10. It's 10. <laughs> I'm sorry. Thank you All for right, that. I cleared that up. Took 10 showers. It's just obviously my entire body smelled, but nothing can compare to the smell of the crotchal region neglected of soap and water. Right. Right. I could go into more detail, but thinking about the smell is too traumatic. The, the thing that I failed to talk about and, and I was mad at myself for not really bringing this up is... Craig, would you do you still hold that opinion and would you stick to it hard if you knew that there was going to be some copulation happening later that day? Oh, I think it's a fair question. And in that scenario, Crossville Region jumps up the board to to first off the board. Yeah, Here, here's my. So I think what Con- Connor's email is perfectly valid. If you're taking 10 showers in four months, <laughs> I get that. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm my argument. I think what Ben was Smells saying like too Bigfoot's was like dick. Yeah. On a <laughs> on a on a daily standpoint, from a daily standpoint, every single day, if you could only wash something that day, but you shower every day, like most people I think do, I'm doing the pits because. Actually, by the way, most people definitely don't shower every day. I think that's a misconception. I, I do, for the record, but I don't think most people shower every day. Okay, or even maybe every other day. A lot of people don't. I should say. I'm just saying on a day-to-day basis, I think the armpit is the most important because it's it's the it's the easiest to give off it's the smell closest to, to people other people around you. <laughs> yeah. You know, if you miss a day showering and and you know, even with deodorant, you could sometimes be sitting next to somebody at work and it's like, uh oh, I think I kind of yeah, smell. That's true. If that's you true. miss the crotchal region and it's just water one day, you got underwear, you got pants on it, I feel like you can hide that for much longer. Um, we have 10 proof showers in four months, crotch, I understand. We have proof of this. It's really hard to re wear a shirt. If you've been sweaty, but it's pretty fine to rewear jeans. Yeah, well, yeah, not shirt. underwear, not underwear. Yeah, no, it's not underwear. underwear but but uh, the shirt is cu- is touching the body. The right, jeans fine. are not. All right, that's not it. Well, you, well you, yeah, all right, I guess you're right. So what was? The, did, do we get like a sense of what the results were, Heifetz, in terms of overall volume? Well, it seemed to me like two thirds sided with DK, one third sided with me. 
Yeah. Just Luckily, depends you're on the allowed people to shower are, more than one part of your body. Hoping and or knowing they're going to be. But like DK, if, if you smelled bad right now, like let's say you just played basketball and you had to go yeah. to dinner tonight with some friends and you could only wash, wash the crotch or the pits, <laughs> what are you doing? Well, the crotch, because I can put on deodorant. Okay. I guess, I, can... I guess like if in that specific narrow scenario, if well, I'm that's, not. That's normal life. People work out, they go home, they shower, they go to work. Well, here's. <laughs> Yeah, and then they make sweet, sweet love to their partner, right? Hopefully. <laughs> every every so, morning. <laughs> on, but on this note, you guys are having this hypothetical conversation about like obviously one or the other. It's like, well, obviously you could just do both in the shower. <laughs> right. But we got other emails. You, only, yeah, you can only do one from now on. That's no. The but this is from. So, I, I'm sorry, I forget your name, but you're a hero. It wrote, the fact that DK and Craig thought Heifetz was bougie, bougie for using a detachable shower handle here is wild. I now assume that they both about face bend over and spread their cheeks to the fixed shower head for minimal water pressure. And like, it's definitely <laughs> better to reach these areas you're talking about that you want flushed quicker than spinning in a circle, hoping the falling water rinses the suds off you. What kind of low water pressure are you dealing with? I feel like I, I have enough water pressure to like, rinse you just myself of water. A detachable shower handle that you can like use all over. It's like $23 no, on I Amazon. I recognize that. I, I mean, look, I've gone to Europe. I have used these. I think they suck. I hate that. I don't know. It's it's one of those things where it's like. What what, what do you mean? What sucks? The detachable water spout. It's not a to, second one. It's the primary. You can just I pick thought it, it was up. a it's second like a, one. It's like a cordless you phone. Bougie. No, it's like okay, a, so you can no, do not both. a second one. I think that's fine. Yeah, it's like if that second one was the only one, that second one's on the wall where yours is. Yeah. Yeah. And like it's one. It's like a cordless phone. Yeah. Yeah. And I would leave the cordless phone in its thing. I, I don't like I don't like the like taking it off and spraying it all around. That's weird. No, I'm no, you're doing it around your head right now. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking okay. about the end with the things that are upside right. down, you know? I'm with high. You're really like, taking advantage of the shower. Like you really want to get in there. Um, is what you're saying. I'm with high. I this. don't know another I, way. I originally called you bougie because I thought you said that you had a second shower head that was maneuverable, but just the one shower head that's maneuverable, it makes total sense to me. It's $24 totally and you have a screwdriver. I don't there. think it's bougie. I just think it's, I don't like it as much. That, but that's just because I grew up not doing that ever. And my first experience of it was like in Europe and I just really don't like their shower situation at all. You know, the showers that I hate, you know, the ones when you're in a hotel and I apologize if anybody at home has this, the showers that come from the ceiling, the, the drain yeah. or the spout from it's the like ceiling is rain, awful. The rain showers. It's just yeah, raining. That's... Cause you can't get any, you can't even get your armpit. You have to like, you go, need a you know, focal point. Yeah. You, you got to turn into fucking Neo from the matrix just to wash yeah. your armpits. I right. can't believe those exist. Right. I agree with that. That's like an idea. Someone came up with like at a boardroom, but like they never, you know what I mean? But it they, like, like looks that cool. Like when you see the photo on Zillow, you're like, wow, nice bathroom. And then when you take the shower, you're like, I can't watch it. You just got like a the top film of, my head. of soap on you for the rest of the day. <laughs> I think this is going to be my Christmas gift to both of you. I'm going to send you guys like really nice shower heads to swap in for your, your wall mounted ones. I will not be uh, using that. Sorry. I'll accept that. Happily. I think you say that, but then when you try it. So do you, no, have I, one, you have one setting? You can't even change the setting on how the water comes out? I have uh, the best shower in America. Like. I bought a piece of shit house. Okay. Like, I bought a hundred year old house, by the way. This is the hundredth year of my house. Uh, wow. Built it in 1924. And the only thing I liked about it when I bought it was the, the water pressure was incredible in the shower because there's one bathroom, one shower. And I'm like, I could live here. Everything else could be crappy. And as long as the shower pressure is like this, like I'm keeping it. I'm not changing that fucking shower head ever. I don't but what care. What does that have to do with the water pressure? There's like all, there's a whole bunch of different shower heads now. And this is probably like, environmentally bad but like we'll reduce like the shower pressure so you use less water but i need that water pressure i, I need it I, in my I, life i think we should have an episode where we all admit like the one anti-eco friendly thing right. we love to do right oh i because everybody I, has that right now for the record i, I take like my showers are very fast so i saw I my um, for it. my building in dc they separate recycling and garbage and i saw one day i looked outside the truck they and put they it in the same truck. Put them in the same one. And yeah. I'm like, you know what? Now I just, fuck it. I'll throw out the cans. I'm like, what am I going to do? This is all like, <laughs> terrible. I, I, I felt terrible. So You're stupid. not doing your part. I felt <laughs> so, I felt like the big lie. Like I just, it all like, I, I couldn't believe, I felt like such a sheep when they I just had put the them in the same, same thing. experience. Heifetz. When I lived in New York, I worked on that show, Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt as a PA. And at night we had to like, you know, bunch up the recycling and the, and the non-recycling 
and wait for the people to come and throw it in the trash. I had like a really late day of work and I saw the guy take the recycling bag and the non-recycling and dump them into the same Dude, bed of the truck. I and know. I was like, what the fuck? Or, have you seen those? I found one of these in real life a few weeks ago. Have you seen those garbage cans where in theory it's supposed to be three bags, garbage, compost, recycling? And it's just three and holes I, all going into one bag. And it bag. turns out three holes to the same thing because they don't want you to get in the habit of it, but they can't actually do it. And I saw one the other day. I was like, oh my God, this is all going to the same place. Yeah. Anyway. All right. So emails to ring of fantasy football, gmail.com. If you have more questions, question about the draft, question, low stakes conspiracy, th conspiracy theories, questions about showers, questions about all the other things. I don't want your shower. Head. Poll, I appreciate the thought. Stand or sit water, uh, fold. Also football. Fold. Emails about teams. Water, water fold. Boom. Uh, yeah. Thank you everyone for listening. Thank you, DK. Thank you, Craig. Thank you, Kai, for producing this episode. Thank you, Connor. Thank you, Arjuna. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, Kira. Thank you, Dan Comer, for a ridiculous amount of research help. Um, not just with the draft guide, nfldraft.3.com, but also showering. Mm. You know, Dan Comer, you know, really well showered man. Well showered. Thank you, Lauren. Lauren. Thank you, Outcast. Thought you were going to go on Acon. I, I thought it was finally Acon day. I've said that recently, I feel like, though. Oh, but, did you? Yeah, yeah you're right. Outcast is so good, though. I love Outcast. Hell yeah. It's like Akon with a T. I thought. What did you think that meant? I thought if it was like spelled like Akon with a T, that would be right. But I obviously that that listen. I I think I confused the word spelled and pronounced. I think I I have like a problem. No, no. I do no, feel like no. more like Charlie from It's Always Sunny every every time I do the show. The irony is we all do like, it a lot, but you just do it a little more pu like publicly and. Yeah, when Solix is like preaching every yeah. episode, no one's like, hoo, hoo, hoo. What's, What's your guys' your favorite Outcast song? What's your guys' favorite Outcast song? Mine is uh, So Fresh, So Clean, I think. <laughs> I think specifically your ar armpits only. Yeah. yeah. Not I sing it every time I shower. Yeah. yeah. I think I, is it, is it, I, you know what? It's probably really basic to say Miss Jackson or B.O.B., but like I'm a basic person and it's fine. So I'm going to say it's a great Jackson song to B.O.B. No shame. Are, and hey, uh, yeah. Yeah, roses. I mean, they're all good. Roses, roses. smell like poo poo. Yeah, that's right. Outcast, they always say the term like no skips. Like they actually have multiple no skips albums. Also, wait, did you see the, the album that he just kept put out, Mr. Like Andre 3000? The um album he just came out, the song names on the album? No. He just put out like, when was the last time Andre 3000 had music? Like 15 years ago? And yeah, then he released know. this album. Where it was like just like a jazz flute, like he was Ron Burgundy with no rapping whatsoever. <laughs> nice. Did you see this? No, no I'm looking at it now though. Andre 3000 digs jazz. Look at the names of the songs on the album. Wait, what's the name of the album? Oh no, oh, no, it's called New Blue Sun. Look, look at the names of the trap of, of the tracks on this album. Interesting. They're all like full sentences. They're full sentences. They're like the opening songs, I swear I really wanted to make a rap album, but this is literally the way the wind blew me this time. That's the name of the first song. Phrasing. <laughs> the third song is that night in Hawaii when I turned into a panther and started making these low register purring tones that I couldn't. It, it, it's, it, I don't even know what it is. It goes off the end of Spotify. It's provocative. It's jazz. It's the people going. <laughs> All right. Well, DK, you're a jazz guy. Check that out. All right. Boom. Nice. Just Andre and Stan Getz. All right. Goodbye, everyone.